The RPG Maker General Podcast, or the RPG MGP, brought to you by Evil, NASDAQ symbol (laughs) D-O-O-M. Welcome to the RPG Maker General Podcast, or the RPG MGP, your one-stop shop for everything RPG Maker. This is Cody, a.k.a. Marpix, and with me today are the Red Mage. Hello. Kiara Bonic. Hey, it's me. My co-star from Defeat to Darkness, Adam. How you doing? From Tumblr's RPG Maker Development Network, Fox. Meow. <laughs> and joining us for the first time, a frequenter on RPG MG and the creator of Celia's Quest on Steam, please buy it, Slaw. Hello, hello. Hello. So, uh, we actually have some news going on this week. I, I bothered to do the research, you're all welcome. Uh, Yanfly, because he's damn near close or over 100 plugins by now has decided to reduce how much work he's been doing because the poor bastard works full-time already and is doing three or four videos a week and contributing to RPG Maker while he's working his full-time job. He needs a break, man. Yeah, for real. Yeah, someone get him a... a vacation yeah. so he yeah, can, yeah. you know, not work and then make us more fucking... <laughs> I mean, I, I was watching that video he released about it and I, I kind of wish he, uh... I kind of wish he... Drop the whole like here's me as a fluff ball for that video just because it. I I mean I know it's a it's a serious topic but it's it's hard to uh, take a bit seriously when it's also paired up with RTP music. It's pretty difficult to just assume that he's actually sick when you see us as this random blob talking to you with happy generic music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Would you guys prefer if he broadcasted live from his hospital bed, like, hey guys, it's me, Yanfly. Yes, I, I, I would, actually. <laughs> that would be phenomenal, actually. I want these super sad selfies, like top-down view, duck face, bruises everywhere. Just to know it's really serious. Instead, it's got that, that like, the openings uh, that, you know the theme that comes in a default project on uh, the X-Ace, like... That's on the title screen. Guys, I'm dying. I'm dying right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. <laughs> well, it does sound kind of like the plot to a generic RPG Maker game, so it kind of works. <laughs> yeah. Yacht Fly Quest. <laughs> Please do. Oh, no. Uh, so... So moving away from that, uh, just this morning, uh, as of recording, Yanfly made a new Tips and Tricks, and if you take six of his scripts and mash them together and throw them in a blender, you can get Jump from Final Fantasy IV. I love Final Fantasy IV, <laughs> and Jump, and Dragoons in general, so... Would you use six plugins to make it work? No. Plus my game's a monster raising game, so it wouldn't work anyway. <laughs> yeah. There has to be an easier way to do it, like, yeah, it's very smart of him to actually make it work, but you have to be able to do it just through eventing. I can't imagine that being the best way to do it at all. I'm going to, have to, yeah, I'm going to, have to mute myself for a second. People are touring the house. <laughs> all right. And over here we have our son's room. Hey, come say hi. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to what be internet famous, in Mom. God damn it. <laughs> Fox. Fox. <laughs> Come down. Why, why are you pulling up in your room? We're having a party. We have guests over. You're being so rude. <laughs> yeah, come be social. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. You have to read that comic where it's like, uh, son, your grandmother died. Did she drop any good loot? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I think you could presumably do jump with a venting, but Yanfly has you use all of his scripts because... If you use Yanfly scripts, then they aren't going to be incompatible with each other, and that way you are able to make the skill, make the person who uses it unselectable and disappear, then they come back and do damage based on whatever formula, and then return to the party. Let me tell you something, though, because this is all leading to me figuring out, I know what Yanfly is up to right now. I, I, I know the conspiracy behind Yanfly. He started adding a little thing at the very like middle of the script that most people are going to see where it says, this is legally owned by Yonfly, and if you use this in your project, you have to pay me. And essentially, once everyone gets, once everyone gets uh, all of his scripts in their games, he, he can sue them for not paying them, and that's how he's going to pay for his hospital bills. That's <laughs> perfect sense. Serious notes. I, I'm guessing he does it like this because it's actually free ads, basically, for his stuff. 
of course you're gonna he's gonna want to use his plugins to make it work even if he could do it in a different way since yeah. whoa Genfly's things can do a jump thing too. Wait, does Genfly make what? any money off of his stuff Patreon his money? Oh Patreon. So there you go. Um and uh finally something that I've been seeing around Tumblr and haven't bothered to plug quite yet. Coming on July 9th, which may have already passed, is my first game jam. So if you're interested in doing a game jam, it's a two-week thing from July 9th to the 23rd. They have an itch.io, they have a Slack. If you've never made a game before, this is your time to meet a bunch of people like you who've never made a game, join together, figure out what total failures you are, and then become less of a failure as you grow and make game. Yeah, two weeks is just enough time to fail your first project. <laughs> yeah. For me, if, if it were me, two weeks would be enough to maybe get my idea done, like just in paper. Nah, you just gotta go. You just go with it. You just open up, open up the uh, hit F eight, go for it. Don't even, don't even plan. Plan nothing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. just gonna go ahead and uh, clear up my disk space by deleting the Windows 64 and all the other non-important files in the core system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the theme for this game jam is a new spin on a popular story myth or myth. So now you can make a game where you play as the dead dog in that one urban legend about the Oops. dead dog in the suitcase. Finally. Just what I've always wanted. <laughs> I, was, I was hoping for a game about Doge, but, you know, that works too. <laughs> That's already been made. There's like 10 or 20 of those by now. I bet hell off of them are on Steam. Yeah, but a, a, a better one. <laughs> oh, I don't think a better <laughs> I mean, one like, I'm, imagine, imagine being the person 10 years from now who made like a Doge or any other meme game, just looking back and being like, ah, oh, fuck. Yep. I, I actually love that about myself. I had my notebooks from like first and second grade when I wrote stories. I They were here until about five years ago. And just reading them, I cringed. But because I cringed, I realized how far I had come since those masterpieces I wrote back when I was seven. Yeah, that's true. Good job. You're better than seven-year-old you. Well done. <laughs> Only a little bit. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. If any of you want to make a gritty, a gritty retelling of B movie, then then that's pretty good. That's a popular RPG story, movie. Isn't it? But how how does B movie start again? By the way. Uh, stop it, it starts. You stop it. You stop that right now. <laughs> well, well, I'm gonna get the goddamn radix. <laughs> According to all known laws of aviation, there is no way a bee should be able to fly. Its wings are too small to get its fat little body off the ground. The bee, of course, flies anyway because bees don't care what humans think is impossible. Great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Never get tired of hearing it, Carb. Yeah. All right. So, Project Progress. We're recording this about a week after the last cast, so I have planned on taking all of tomorrow and getting a bunch of footage recorded. I don't know if that means I'm going to balance the upcoming fight for the next episode, or if it just means I'm going to record as much dialogue footage as I can and then work on the battle stuff later. But either way, I hope that Sunday, July 3rd, will be a significant day of progress for Defeat the Darkness. Uh, Carb, what are you working on? Well, I've decided to start a new project. It's not a, it's not RPG Maker, so it's a bit tangential. But I'm going to be working on a fast person first, a <laughs> fast Sonic. paced first person shooter, uh, set in sort of like a uh, LSD dream emulator type world. Well, that that's still pretty fast. Hmm, it sounds very fast, really. <laughs> it only appears fast in the game. Like if you ever step out of the LSD dream in the game, then you'll realize how slow the world actually is. It's actually a slow person shooter. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> a slow person shooter. It's you. so fast that it's slow, you guys. Slow. Sanic would be proud. <laughs> hey, Slaw, do you got anything going on now that uh, Celia's quest is complete? Well, except for my resounding success of Celia's quest, there is like a few hundred sold copies. Nah, but it's doing fairly well. Uh, I started a new project in back in February, and it's going slow since I used the uh, graphics released by Chaos. I'm not sure if you follow that whole debacle on the forums. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It uses stolen stuff from, like, uh, Nino Kuni, right? Yeah, there's a few parts of it. He stole, like, basically textures that he used in other parts. So all of the uh, tile graphics I used had to be thrown away and changed. Which put me back like a month of progress yeah, or so. That's terrible. Yeah, but I 
I'm back on track and slowly making progress. I'm sitting at six hours of gameplay or so right now, and I'm Damn. hoping to expand that to seven until before this weekend is done. Nice. Excellent. Uh, Adam, you got anything going on? Uh, well, I would like to say I'm starting NaNoWriMo, you know, National Novel Writing Month, but unfortunately, I... I have less than two months until my wedding, so I have to really hunker down and figure that stuff out. And I'm also going on a honeymoon literally right after the wedding that I need to keep planning and stuff. Is I'm very, very busy, but it's it has nothing to do with RPGs or RPG Maker or any of my writing that I normally do. Wait, are you getting married? Yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, congrats. And if there, if it's anything like ours was, like, after the honeymoon, things just, like, drop off, and you have so much free time, and you're like, how do I even function right now? <laughs> yeah, be, honestly, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> it's yeah. great. All right, uh, Fox, are you working on something? Um, I finally, uh, you know, a month and a half of war later, uh, finished the first draft of the script for the second episode of my game and I'm waiting on a couple people to kind of critique that and in the meantime I've started drafting generally very vague ideas for the next episode before you know I get that critique and then once that critique gets received I'll be starting actual production of the, the game itself can you can you give us a hint about what it is maybe um, like what like in, in what regard or just, uh, like, general plot. <laughs> assume I just walked in off the street, and, and I said, Hey, anyone got a game they're trying to sell? <laughs> yeah, pitch it. Um, it's, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, I could, I could, but it's, it's really, really weird without context from the first episode. But essentially, it's like I mentioned in the last podcast, where this character finds himself in that kind of common trope of, you know, there's a world and a, a thing going on that's a lot bigger than himself. Um, there's a lot of conspiracy, mystery, uh, people die, so on and so forth. Cool. The, yes. the plot thickens. I can dig it. All right, and uh, Red Mage, how's your uh, how's your <laughs> hybrid thingy going over there? Uh, it's it's going. Um, I've actually made more progress now um, since the last podcast. I've got a couple more monsters down. Um, basically, at this point, it's just starting to work on the actual like battle system. Which theoretically, once I can get that done, that's like like sixty percent of the game. <laughs> because if you've ever played Monster Ranger, it's raising monsters, which is all through context menus, and then fighting with monsters, which is like all the game. So that's pretty much all that's going to be there. <laughs> it's just getting all the events to work properly and, and drawing on the proper variables and everything. But it's it's coming along really slow, but. Theoretically, it should be done within a, within the next couple of weeks, and then at that point, the rest of the game should just speed right along. That's the best feeling once all the like base parts are made, so you just kind of add content on top of it, and the game just right. goes like hour by hour per day. Yep, that's the plan. Wonderful. Well, it's good to hear that you're all hard at work on something, then we can all be not lazy together. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. going to move on to our subject today, which is villains. Dun, dun, dun. I have yet to play an RPG that has not had a villain, or needed a villain. Uh, yeah. Th the only exception I can think of off the top of my head is Ultima 4, and that was by design a quest of enlightenment that had no overarching conflict or villain. Uh, uh, you straight up just, uh, you just straight up ruined your own thing. Yeah, I've never, I have, a I've never played an RPG. Guy. I have never played an RPG without a villain. Exactly. Except I've never played song. an RPG without a villain. Yeah, he's saying that oh. he's never played but Ultima with one exception, of course. No, I've never played Ultima 4. I've read a lot about oh. Ultima 4. Oh, somebody yeah, else And I've that. bitched a lot about Ultima 4. <laughs> <laughs> see, <laughs> see, it's, see, it's one of those tripped up with those uh those semantics. I did not have sex with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. <laughs> but anyhow, 
We got a rather big crowd today. I'd like for everyone to talk about their favorite villain. And for me, this is going to sound really silly, and mo a lot of people probably have this answer too, but my favorite villain in an RPG has to be Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. He, uh, Kefka is essentially the Joker in an RPG. He's insane, he does what he wants, and everything he does really fucking hurts. Everything. He turns the espers into magicite. He poisons a river early on. Every time you see this guy, he just is being ridiculous and making you hate him more and more and more. And then when you finally get to go fight him, he says he's basically been doing it for the lulls. <laughs> yeah. yeah Intelligent, much. nihilistic, and with a wicked sense of humor. Exactly. Sounds like my sister. <laughs> so... So Kefka, he's not overly complicated like later uh, Final Fantasy antagonists are. He does enough in the context of the story to make you hate him and stay motivated to finish the game. His actions are more important than his okay. psyche, and that's why I like him. I would actually refute that previous claim you just said about all the later Final Fantasy villains being complicated. Name a Final Fantasy villain who either who doesn't want to either destroy the world or become a god. Uh, so Ultimacia wants to destroy everything or cause a stable time loop. Yeah, that's just kind of... That's, that's something I'll talk about when it's my turn to talk about a villain, but 95% of villains in RPGs all want the same thing. The, uh, is it Final Fantasy XII who just says a guy who wants to rule his country, more or less? Yeah, isn't the general goal just world domination? Yeah, world or, domination just, or world yeah. destruction. Or, or on a more comical scale, the uh, the tri-state area. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll rule the county. But what about uh, Jack of Blades though, from uh, Fable? Oh, he doesn't want to destroy yes. the world or rule the world or anything. He just wants to kind of do his thing and be a douchebag. Well, in a way, he does want to destroy the world. Yeah, <laughs> like doesn't he want to basically become a god, kind of? He is a god from the start, so that's kind of his thing. Like, he's this immortal being, and all he wants is to just be able to roam and do whatever he wants. The greatest hero the world has ever known. Red Mage, you have the floor. Who is your favorite villain in an RPG? Uh, see, I, mine is, is on, on in a similar vein, in that it's, it's mostly just unwanted destruction, which is kind of, which is kind of interesting, because... One of my favorite villains really doesn't have like any direct impact, uh, or, or rather, like any influence, I guess, directly through his actions or its actions, rather, um, which would be the planet parasite Lavos from Chrono Trigger, but not not like the inside and not the fight where things start to get weird <laughs> with it at the end, but just the very concept of this thing that really. Isn't nece I mean, what it's doing is evil to the people on the planet, but it itself is really just surviving. Like that's how it survives. So yeah, it shows it's just up. part of its life cycle. Ex exactly. It's it, it's it's like the biggest man versus nature possible, <laughs> because it's just it shows up, it slams into the planet, it burrows into the core, and begins to eat the planet from the inside out. It kind of sounds like Cthulhu in a way, where it's not that he particularly has any sort of grudge against humanity, he just really doesn't care. Right. You know? I mean, there, he's, yeah, he's, he's basically like, like animal level intelligence. Until you, like I said, until you get further inside it, and then you start fighting his core, and then the entire thing takes, you know, your standard JRPG way and just gets really weird and bizarre and out there. <laughs> and you really can't follow exactly what's going on, but. Just, just the idea of something that's just not necessarily malevolent or evil or bent on destroying everything. It's just trying to survive, and you're getting in its way. Right. So either either you survive or it does, but both of you can't survive in this environment because either A, you kill Lavos and you continue living, or B, Lavos eats the Earth's core, we lose our magnetic field, and we quickly get stripped away by solar wind. Right, and then he goes on to the next planet and continues the process. I mean, it's, like I said, it's, there's no malevolence there. It's just pure instinct and survival. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, all right, I'm um, going to keep moving forward here. With, uh, so, Carbonic, uh, who's your favorite RPG villain? Now, I've probably said this before, and um, it might sound a bit not, not cliche or something, but um, at least for me it might, but uh, Buzzo from Lisa the Painful. 
Mm. I really Hell like. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. He's arguably the main antagonist of Painful. Um, I mean, you can argue against that, but he's probably the leading threatening force in the game. It's not particularly due to his backstory or anything. I don't really feel bad for him as a person in the end. But um, I think he's probably one of the best examples of a villain making you dread them. Because every time Buzzo shows up, something bad is going to happen. And when I say something bad, I, I mean something really bad is going to happen yeah. to you. Um, you're going to lose a limb or something, or your daughter's going to lose her nipple or something. <laughs> Weird. Or, or he's going to really kill off fun. a handful of your friends. I mean, he's yeah. just... Buzzle's great. I, I support that. <laughs> yeah. How many of you have played... Uh, Buzzle for presidency. How many of you have uh, played Lisa? I cannot say I that I have. I've only looked at it a few times. Soon. Yeah, I've been through it once, I think. <laughs> Tried another time, but couldn't get very far, far that time. But it's a fun game. Right. It's well written enough. Mm-hmm. Adam, who's your favorite villain in an RPG? You know, I don't know about favorite, because favorite's kind of hard to nail down. I, I will talk about a villain who I don't really think gets talked about enough. So I'm a huge fan of the Bioware games. You know, it's something I've talked about a lot in the podcast. You know, I know I've talked about Jade Empire to death on this podcast, but I'm not <laughs> actually going to talk about Jade Empire today. I'm going to talk about Dragon Age Origin and how... It kind of has two villains, because it has the Blight, which is sort of like the main villain, but it also has the villain... Uh, Terran Logan, who I would kind of stretch to call a villain. He's definitely an, an antagonist, but everything he does, he's doing for, as far as he sees, right reasons. Like He's basically preventing his country, like trying to make his country stronger, because it's in a weakened state where it is right now. And he is willing to do anything to defend his country and the people he cares about, even if it means killing you, because you're part of the problem being a Grey Warden. <laughs> so... He sounds great because he's voiced by Simon Templeton, so and he's awesome. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> yeah, no, he, he's he's totally great. Uh, you can convince him to join your party if you meet the requirements near near the end of the game. You could actually have him become a party member and basically turn him into a good guy. But he's very much an antagonist, and I don't think he gets talked about enough. So so that's what I think. Is he kind of like Ozymandias in the way where it's like what I'm doing is right, what you're doing is wrong? Yeah, kind of, except I wouldn't say he's nearly as, as grandiose as Ozymandias. He's very, he's a very practical man, and he's definitely <laughs> seeing this from a practical point of view, you know. He's not rank, trying to change the world or become the savior. He basically just kind of wants to protect the people that he cares about and the country that he loves. Yeah, he doesn't really see himself as morally superior. It's more about, well, this is better for me and for mine. He knows it's yeah. bad for someone else. It's not just about doing the right thing. It's about doing the right thing for him. And he knows that. Exactly. I think he's really cool. I don't think he gets talked about enough. So I'm not sure if he would be my favorite, but I definitely think he needs to get talked about a lot more than he does. I think part of the problem is he was in a Bioware game. <laughs> like, it's not exactly a Final Fantasy or anything. Yeah. I don't know. It seems to me like... Everyone talks about how great JRPGs are, and I do love JRPGs, but it seems like more and more time goes on, the more Western RPGs start to get loved at that sort of level, like the Final Fantasy series is. Yeah. Wait, are you calling Final Fantasy a Western RPG? No, I mean, I'm talking... I'm, I'm calling it JRPG, because that's what it is. I'm talking about, you know, it's... JRPGs, for the longest time, have been kind of held up to their own really, really high standards of, it, you know, especially Final Fantasy, because... You know, I remember back in the day, if it has Final Fantasy on it, then it's got to be a masterpiece, right? <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Especially yeah. those past 15 years, what a boon. Oh, yeah, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it held true until, like, after Final Fantasy IX. All of those games are, regardless if you like or dislike them, they are really high quality. Yeah. Yeah. After that, like, Final Fantasy X's voice acting kind of feels wrong, and then it kind of just falls from there on. Yeah, well, just gotta learn how to laugh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can't wait to see if Final Fantasy XV isn't garbage. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I hate being hyped for games because I'm always disappointed. Man, I am so hyped for XV. <laughs> like, it we're, looks we're great. ridiculously hyped. 
I am you have uh, to carefully convince optimistic. yourself to be a. Uh, you have to convince yourself to be a. You have to be a surprised pessimist rather than a disappointed optimist. That's true. Yep. You don't want your dreams crushed too often. Yeah. Crushing dr- nine. <laughs> Speaking of crushing dreams, uh, Slav, who's your favorite dream crusher? Yeah, I'd say Adam from the Diablo series. Since no one really knows who Aids is at first. Yeah, Aids. Yeah, Aids is my main villain. No, <laughs> Aiden, uh, the Dark Wanderer from Diablo Two. Oh, yeah, that's he's actually oh, since a good choice. Since it's part of the first two games, like a main part, you play him in the first, then he gets corrupted between the first and second game, and then you follow him in the second. I like how many details you actually find out about him, but then he's never actually part of the storyline until you finally confront him at the end of the game. And I think it's a really smart way to do a villain. Yeah, basically the entire plot of Diablo 2 is you going somewhere and saying, Oh yeah, I know that guy, he went that way. Yeah, exactly. And you don't even know what, what his deal is. You just know that bad things happen when he goes past. Yeah. And then if you actually look into the lore of Diablo 1 and follow the story there, there you realize what kind of person you're dealing with and who it was. And It's a pretty sad story too. It's not one of those like... I was evil from the start kind of guys. He's actually doing the right thing for as long as he can. It just doesn't work out in the end. Yeah. All right. Well, I agree with that. He's a good villain. Can I just do an honorable mention? Do it. <laughs> yeah, I took Garland from Final Fantasy IX. Kuja is the worst villain I've ever seen in a game, mostly because he's wearing a thong. But uh... Okay, I actually have a different pick for worst villain of all time, but you go ahead. Yeah, but yeah, Garland from Final Fantasy IX is one of those guys, once again, that does what's right for him and his people. I mean, he wants his entire planet to survive. And that was the plan for many, many years ago, like way before humanity or whatever humanity equivalent is in this world existed. And he's just playing along with the deal. That, he doesn't even have a free will. He's an android doing what he has to do. I like the idea that the villain actually knows what he's doing isn't the right thing, but he just does it anyway. Makes sense. I can dig it. So, Fox, I hope you've thought of one by now. <laughs> I have. What is it? Oh. <laughs> 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 I didn't have anything to say before. Um, but I'm going to go, after having given me a little bit of thought, I'm going to go with Silas from the Chaos Rings games. It's a, yeah, it's a Square Enix game that's like on mobile, iOS, iPhone, iPad, so on and so forth. Um, one, of, one of the original games I actually played on iOS, and it was fantastic. I really love it. Uh, but Silas is kind of one of those villains that I like a lot, where you kind of sympathize with them a lot um, once you find out who they actually are. So the game revolves around you know your character being a part of this arena that you're forced into to fight to the death with other, with other people in order to become... Uh, basically the best of the best in order to fight this world-eating monster uh, known as the Qualia. And in the original project, it was Silas and, like, four other people who started the arena. And Silas was supposed to be getting the job of, you know, overseeing everything and becoming what's known as the Almighty. Uh, But she was denied that position and instead became uh, the person in charge of creating beasts that would challenge the arena contestants, uh, you know, their skill and make sure they were worthy of having that title of the best. Um, but so basically, she became the mother of all these monsters, and those are the same monsters that you kill, you know, in your grind for XP and leveling up and whatever to get through the game. And she's outraged both by the fact that she has been, you know, denied her wanted and, by all accounts worthy position because she was better at it at more qualified than the person who actually got the position and the fact that you're killing all her children so she's trying to kill you as well as take over the whole arena itself because of everything that's happened it's really nifty yeah i'm, I'm actually a really big fan of the chaos ring series so yes i can yeah <laughs> yeah can somebody knows yes <laughs> I, I've, I've played all all three of the old ones, and I'm just basically waiting to pick up three at some point. But yeah, I looked good, at three. Good it games. Doesn't look that great. I'm not, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but whatever. But yeah, definitely gonna go with Silas because I feel bad for her, and she has a reason for what she's doing. 
But unfortunately, you are chocolate and I am peanut butter, and we cannot coexist on this dessert. <laughs> okay. No, we could work together. No, it cannot be. What are you talking about? Those two go well together. No, no, you see, it's, yeah. it, it's a moral quandary. They don't know it, but we as the audience understand that they could live in harmony if only they could work out their differences. <laughs> Yeah, but it's it's also one of those things where Solus, uh liked the people in the original Ark Project, at least the the big two. She's not really herself anymore. She's implanted her cranial nerve system into a computer, which is then operating as she would. So she herself is pretty much gone, except for her memories and personality inside a machine. Ah, yeah, Chaos Rings is all level of just weird. Like once you start getting <laughs> into it. It is, but it, it takes a playthrough or two to, to understand what's going on, but... Yep. So, so quick side note, is, is Square Enix having a return to form by releasing an obscure experimental RPG? Like, have they finally found their their creative side again? Are you talking about Chaos Rings? Yeah, you said it was done by Square <laughs> Enix, right? Yeah, it was, but that was back in 2011. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Now they're... I don't know... I, th- I haven't seen anything like neat or experimental from them in in a while that that was any good. So we'll see. Uh, Did you see that Batman design they made? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was like highlighted everything that was wrong with Square Enix's um, current like design scheme. It's like they start with a concept and then they keep going. For they way keep... too long. They keep drawing. <laughs> they yeah, keep strapping that's... more and more stuff to it. Isn't that the JRPG where you just like go twenty belts, four hundred sad backstories for every character? <laughs> yes. Where it takes you. The belts is purely Final Fantasy, or the their designers anyhow. Uh, oh, no, I mean wait. like Look back in Kingdom the early two thousands. Back in the early two thousands, three D platformers were really trying to get edgy with their characters. Super Mario 64. So I did. Yeah, he had a belt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. Fuck. All right, so I had at least two of you, you wanted to talk about your least favorite villain? Yeah. Uh, again, just being RPGs? Yeah. I've already talked about how much I love Bioware RPGs, and anybody who knows me in real life will tell you that I eat, breathe, and shit Star Wars. Yes. So, Knights yes. of the Old Republic is amazing. I love Knights of the Old Republic. I love Knights of the Old Republic 2. But as much as I love the original Knights of the Old Republic, Darth Malak is probably the worst villain I've ever seen. I would argue against that a bit, with Kraya being you know, the worst in that regard. What are you talking about? Kraya's is amazing! <laughs> Like, it's just every single thing that, you know, Darth Malak does in the game just kind of comes off as this spoiled, bratty child who's completely ineffectual. And in a, in a bigger sense, he's technically not even the villain of the game. Potentially, the player could be the villain of the game. You know, Hell it's just yeah. that so the he, antagonist. He's, he's whiny and ineffectual, so essentially Kylo Ren from the new movie. <laughs> yeah, Kylo Ren, but better. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would actually say Kylo Ren is probably a lot better than Malak. Honestly, I would I would vote for Kylo Ren in a fight between Malak and Kylo Ren. <laughs> God, really? Yeah, really. Wow, See, wow I, that's I, that's a pretty low bar. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I think. Fox, Fox, did you have a did you have a worse villain? Fox. 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 <laughs> Oh, son, you gotta tell him about your worst, your least favorite villain, son. Come on. I can't really think of anything. Okay. I can take a bad villain if you want to. Yeah, sure. Let's just, because everyone wants to talk about Final Fantasy all the time. <laughs> so let's go back to Kuja. So you have Final Fantasy Nine, right? Right. It does a lot of new things story-wise for a Final Fantasy game. It tries a new setting. It makes everyone weird elephant people. <laughs> kind of like it goes kind of darker than the other games, at least if you look past the happy faces and everything. Yeah, it's really funny. You would think that looking at the art design, it's actually a lot more cheerful and bright than some of the other Final Fantasy games, but it's actually a lot darker. Yeah, yeah, it, like the story is super dark, and then they add those ridiculous characters on top of it to kind of counteract the dark story in a way, which works really well, by the way. But Kuja is such a horrible villain. <laughs> like, 
so, so, so the idea is that he's like an android creation thing that it's given us all and is set to the world to create chaos and cause <laughs> wars, right? And in his, what, thousand years of creating war, he's pretty much pitted one incompetent queen against another kingdom. And that's his entire, like, list of achievements. And then he runs around in his thong for no reason, <laughs> saying, like, weird, obscure things to the party, getting caught around every corner, acting superior. And then he does nothing through the entire game, except rebel against the guy he's supposed to help, who pretty much created him, and ruining his plans. Yeah, it's that funny. is a he bad villain. He's not even the final boss of the game. No, yeah, I was the final say... boss has nothing to do with anything. But he's <laughs> right, still that's a what I was going to say. He... Than Kuja. Yeah. Uh, see, yeah, because ne Necron, I think that's his name, is kind of yeah. like my least favorite villain of all time because, like, he you just go shows through the up in the last time. Yeah, and he just kind of he just kind of rolls him. He's like, "Hey, I'm the final boss. We're going <laughs> to fight right now." And you're <laughs> like, that's uh, what's so yeah, good right. About him. But that's the thing. Like, Kuja was such a disappointment as a character and as a villain that he can't have him be the final boss, right? I yeah. mean, he doesn't even get to transform into some kind of, like, five-winged hybrid angel-demon creation like every other Final Fantasy game. <laughs> he just gets to go shiny and wear, like, fluffy pants. Yeah. Uh, so they need something language. big and dramatic that's kind of an angel, but also kind of the destroyer of worlds like every other game has. So they just threw a Necron at the end for no reason. I yeah. will say that, you know, as lame as Kuja is, his fight music is awesome. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's not really... like like. Final Fantasy IX has great theme in general. Like, all the music yeah. in that game is really good. It's like, if, it's like it was designed by Nobuo Uematsu or something. Yeah. But, but imagine if they took that game and then they switched plays for Kuja and Sorn and Thorn and made them the end villain. It would work ten times better because they actually get things done. And they're supposed to be incompetent. They still get more done than Kuja. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That would be a fun idea is you have, like, a bumbling kind of servant, but he somehow, in a, in a reverse Inspector Gadget way, is the one actually getting all the evil shit done. And, like, the actual bad guy is just kind of there. So you mean uh, Persona 4? Sure. Have you ever and watched Wander exactly Over Yonder? The villain there? No, I, I haven't watched Wander Over Yonder. The character isn't exactly uh, bumbling, but the main uh, quote-unquote villain of the first season is complete is like just completely incompetent, and it's his uh, his like henchman who's the like the actual brains of the operation. Interesting. <laughs> um. Anyways, uh, can I say something I I don't like in a villain? Sure. This isn't exactly a specific example, but I hate any villain where it was all just a misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to kill all those children with my sword, it just kind of happened. Yeah, yeah, I just pulled it out and they and all 18 children just fell on the sword all at once. It was weird. <laughs> he stumbled through the door and just children everywhere. <laughs> It's like stepping into Michael Jackson's house. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. God damn it. Anyways, <laughs> or any villain or any villain who changes the uh the public um to who makes the public hate the main character. Do you mean like a Lex Luthor kind of person? Yeah. But that that's more like uh more I hate them in a good way, like as in like they're meant to be hated. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Like so instead of just this villain sucks, it's, this act this villain's actually brilliant, and I you actually you. strongly dislike a villain. You actually care about them in that way instead. I think that's a well written guy, really. Yeah. Um, yeah, but um, a anyone who's just a misunderstanding, I actually do hate. Like, I actually think that's just poor writing. Okay, so so you hate misunderstandings, but you hate the ones that sway public opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the, the villains that can get under your skin like that are the worst. I think a villain that does that really well with absolutely zero dialogue is Knuckles in Sonic 3. Oh, I was gonna mention him. <laughs> you literally crash into him, he steals your emeralds, laughs, and runs off. And then every level or two, he activates some kind of trap to fuck you over and then giggles and runs away. It's like, I'm gonna get you, Knuckles. I'm gonna make you pay for the shit. Oh. Or, or the uh, Tony Hawk Underground. That was that one guy. Oh, That's not... Tony Hawk Underground, the first one. Yeah, Eric um, Sparrow is his name. Yeah, Eric Sparrow. Yeah, he is such a little <laughs> shit. 
<laughs> he doesn't. He actually, does. He, he. It's not a misunderstanding, but he's that second kind where he he steals what he steals all of your um throughout the game. He steals your basically. He steals the credit the for your yeah the credit for all your stunts and shit. Oh, so he's a Valor thief. That's cool. Dude. Yeah. And in the end, you have the choice to um, it, either be like, I don't care about what you have to say, or the special ending where you just, like, beat him to death. <laughs> yeah, I think it actually depends on what, on what difficulty you're playing on. Because if you're playing on, the, uh, on anything higher than easy, you actually do the, the final skater challenge with him, and you get your tape back and everything. But if you play on easy, I guess you just punch him in the face. And I always <laughs> like that a lot better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you punch him in the face, and, and he's just, like, fucking down. He, like, yeah. smashes into, like, the hood of a car. Yeah. It was never about the money to, as Tony Hawk pay, pays for a game, or gets paid for a game to be made. No, it's all about the bugs and how much you can fuck people over. <laughs> Thank you, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5, for existing, just to be a punchline. It's the genuine, thrilling skater experience that I've always dreamed of. It's everything else that it would be and more. Oh, shit, I'm in a wall. Yep. Yeah, that's that's my, my favorite type of villain, I think, especially for for short games. With With short games, I can be frustrated at a smug prick villain... And deal with them, but for but for a longer game, like say Final Fantasy Tactics, the real villain at the end is basically Jesus, and <laughs> yep. he always yeah. But I mean, before that though, you're dealing with two warring states. You're dealing with the church. You're dealing with your own family who are part of one of the warring states. But then at the end, for no good reason, you fight Jesus. But <laughs> Wait, doesn't he have, like, an elder god inside him that's, like, awakening and is going to kill him? No, your sister. It's like, it's just... Yeah, you're... Wait, your no, sister. I'm thinking of, like, the... the... Okay, what is the... I'll keep going, I'll figure this out. <laughs> Alright, uh, so, so in FFT, you know, because it's a very long game, you want a far-off goal. So you're free to, you know, prance around and explore and do other stuff because the ending will be waiting for you. But with a game like Sonic 3... You're just running right till you get to the end. And that game will take you two, three hours to beat. And that's the type of game where it's like, fucking Knuckles, I'm going to find yeah. you, I'm going to get you. You need that frustration going from the start. Like, you, you want to chase him down, you want to beat him to the ground, right? Yeah, and you're... Yeah, you can't sit there waiting for him. You need to catch up to him right away. It, so you can't do yeah. the long con with him. Uh, yeah, and I was thinking of, uh, I was thinking of um, Final Fantasy Legend 3 for the Game Boy. Mm. Where the the final boss is essentially God, like like uh, like Christianity God, um, <laughs> and and he's uh, he's telling you he he's not attacking you he's telling you to kill him because he's essentially got like Cthulhu um, as a parasite in him growing. Yeah, uh, in that game he is Saul S O L, and then uh, he turns into what is basically Cthulhu. I forgot the thing's name, but you know. Zagor. Zagor, yeah. N now that I just said that, you know, his name is Saul. He he he's S O L, like literally. <laughs> yeah. It all has to do with high school testing. <laughs> God. Oh man, it, know what's funny about FFL three? You know, you're basically going through and killing the. Uh, your villain isn't actually even a person. It's the Pure Land Water entity, because it appeared out of nowhere and is flooding the world, and you have to stop it. And that's Zagor's doing, which you find out basically right then. You know, because before that you're traveling through time, trying to figure out stuff. You get the Mystic Swords, you defeat some fiends. But, uh, so your real enemy is, in theory, time. But uh, you're, you're free to explore as you please. Those settings are always weird. Like, you have this feeling of urgency, right? Because you're in a race against time. Except time waits for you. Uh, it's, it's my main problem with any free roam RPG, in that you just feel like... Well, why would I rush at Fallout. all? Why would I even bother with saving the world? Yeah, Fallout, Morrowind, <laughs> and so on. It's just like, I'm going to lose interest like three or four hours in because I don't feel like the world actually needs saving. It's doing fine on its own. Hmm. Uh, I think specifically, I think the first Fallout, you had to find the Gek or the water chip within a certain amount of time. Yes. Yeah, yes. and in that yeah, one, it actually was... mattered. Like, yeah. if you didn't find it in a certain amount of time, the game actually does just end and you lose. Yeah. Which was great. I loved the first Fallout, and then they just kind of fell off. The second one was still good. The third one, I can never actually finish. 
Yeah, so... New Vegas is amazing. I, I, I finish eventually when I'm at the level cap and bored of killing mutants. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, I gotta find my dad. Yeah, no, I really like New Vegas. I was actually just playing it right before we we started this podcast. And so it's really good. I agree that Fallout 4 especially is... It's fun until you realize that there's nothing left to do in the game other than build stuff. And if you're into games about building stuff like Minecraft... Great! If you're not, like me, well, you're fucked. <laughs> That's what I think is kind of weird. Like, Fallout 4 has kind of spoiled me, in a way, because I've tried going back to Fallout 3 in Vegas, and while they're great, I do the I do the quest or whatever. I just can't help but feel like there's so much junk here, and I could be using it, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and it annoys me, because I can't do it. My main problem with the like sandbox RPGs, or whatever you want to call them, is... Like, you're playing Skyrim, right? And you're, you're pretty much the most badass guy to ever visit this town. I, I'm the king of every freaking guild that is in town. I killed eight dragons attacking it at once. And, was just great. <laughs> and then I go literally ten minutes east. And people have never heard of me. <laughs> and it bothers me to no end. Like, at least if you're going to let me do all these cool things, at least let the world take notice of it. At least change the world based on what I'm doing. What's you, the know what I'm, you know what kind of pet peeves me about in that same, in a similar regard, is like, you've beaten the game, you've got the best armor possible, say Skyrim even. You've, you're wearing dragon bones as armor, <laughs> as trophies of your conquest. You have flames coming out of your armpits because you have so much magic that you don't know what to do with. <laughs> And some bandits decide it's a great idea to try and attack you because, oh, yeah. he looks weak. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like an easy mark. Yeah, but... The guy yeah, literally I... wearing dead dragons. <laughs> <laughs> Where's dead dragons? He shouts fire and he has this weird look about him. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Skyrim doesn't pussy. really have a uh, system of, like, people... Uh, what what is uh, of like reputation? People knowing who you are, yeah. Same stats, yeah. I I don't mind reputation. You know, that's kind of a thing. You know, not everyone's gonna know who you are, but like if you see somebody walking around with the bones of dead dragons as armor, you're not gonna fuck with them in realistic perspective. Yeah. No, like, this should be a thing where bandits don't try to fuck with you when you're wearing a certain type of armor or you achieve a certain type of level. It's the same thing. I remember doing the random mage academy quest or whatever it is. And on the first part, they pretty much treat me like a nobody. This is 20 hours into the game or something. <laughs> yeah. so, which is fine. I've never been there. Okay, I can live with that. Like, bad programmers, whatever. But I get attacked by a dragon in the middle of the quest. Everyone's running around like crazy, panicking, right? Screaming about me killing the dragon. <laughs> I beat it like it's nothing. And then everyone just goes back to acting like nothing ever happened. Like... There are corpses all over the place, right? <laughs> They're just like, well, let's keep going there to your initiation, newbie. Like, yeah, no. Can, can we at least stop for a moment to discuss the giant dragon attacking us? Can, can I get, like, a Gatorade? Like, literally absorbed its soul? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's supposed to be a big thing, right? I literally yeah. just had dinner from this dragon. He, he was my dinner. Just BT dubs. Hey, guys, can we stop for a second? I'm kind of tired. I, I need a Gatorade. Who's, who's got yeah. some Gatorade? Uh, <laughs> I want like a dragon aid. <laughs> My other problem with pretty much all of the Bethesda RPGs, you know, this goes for Elder Scrolls and Fallout, and tying into the theme of the video, is that the villains in these games are almost... I don't want to say they're bad, because that implies that they exist. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember a single villain from any of those games. I, like, I only remember like one. Is nice. Once you actually meet him... I, I might remember... Who is the one from Morrowind? Is it Dagothur? Yeah, Dagothur. Okay, yeah. He's a big villain anyway. Yeah, I don't remember why Why in the hell you need to fight him, but I think that ties into Morrowind's uh, lack of time, because you're just an outlander. You're supposed to wander around and have fun, and then maybe at <laughs> some point you'll stick a sword in a Dagothur and you'll find your own reasons or whatever. Every villain is lemons. <laughs> So, that's so we're talking about Elder character. Scroll villains? Yeah. 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 God, Alduin was such a fucking waste. Yeah, I agree. He looks cool, and it's a great idea to actually have the villain be a really amazingly powerful dragon. But first off, he has no motivation for anything. He just does it because the game programmer said you have to be the bad guy. Every villain is lemons. 
And it's even worse is that fighting him is just like fighting any other dragon in the game. There is no difference. In fact, it's it's easier because there's the three bots that you can't get rid of. Like you can't have the choice to fight him alone. There's three bots that if you leave them alone, they'll kill him. Oh, <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, and, and the thing the is, they build you up. They build you up in the game. They talk like about how you're like big shit. Like it, it's a big deal that you are the way you are. But then that <laughs> happens, and it's just like uh, we've never been able to beat Alduin. And it's just they just do it. You just do it by yourself without you. Well, maybe courage. they never tried before, right? Maybe they just felt like they needed some extra courage. Yeah, it's the Joan of Arc thing. They are so inspired, they have now become invincible and can do all the work for you. But you <laughs> yeah. just stood there and it's like, Hey man, look at Gary the Dragonborn! He did everything! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> did you name your character Gary? <laughs> I never played Skyrim. <laughs> oh. I just pulled oh, a sh- name out of a hat. You know, oh, Gary's really a heroic. <laughs> you really well, did it. I remember once playing Dragon Age Origins and I made an elf and I named him Ninny Fox. <laughs> um, Ninny Fox the needlessly hostile. Uh, that that reminds me of the time I was playing uh, I was playing Skyward Sword at a friend's house and I named Link Num Nuts. <laughs> <laughs> the best name ever, of course. Next to fuck ass. Yes. Too bad I didn't get to to the main villain because I would have loved to hear Ganondorf go Num Nuts. Your time has come. God damn it. You know what I realized? I hate when games don't allow you to... Or games that used to have the ability to name your rival slash villain or whatever, take that away, <laughs> like the Pokemon games did. You mean Minions, only the Pokemon games? Is yeah, there any yes, source? I guess. But, like, now they don't let you. Mm. They I don't like, let you I name like your rival, like, like ass fuck. I named him asshole. Oh, you know yeah, what? That's tradition. Let's let's um, let's go to Pokemon for a second because you're okay. The rivals in Pokemon, like I played, I played X and Y, and they were basically like two friends who were also racing Pokemon. Let's battle; it'll be great. And hey, oh, they suck. Yeah, they yeah, suck. They, yeah, they do. You want they this baby? Yeah, they but the we're... only the only villains in the Pokemon games that were ever worth anything was Plasma in Black and White because they had a legitimate like plan, and they, they actually though. made the player like stop and think for a minute. I mean, they weren't good by any stretch, but they were they were a step above the other teams. I mean, I kind of I kind of like Team Aqua and uh, Team Magma just because they're like, ba- basically they weren't like super serious with their stuff, but they were like Saturday morning cartoon villains. <laughs> yeah, I tell you um, what though, in terms of villains in Pokemon, I absolutely detested Team Flare. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't um, understand them, and they're basically just a bunch of flaming idiots. <laughs> yeah. I and think, I mean, uh, that isn't, like, very flamboyant for no particular reason. I, I hated their boss because um, I, I talked about this, like, a long time ago. This was, like... We Actually, you know what? That, 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 that'll, be, that'll be my call for the worst villain from earlier. That'll be my call for the worst villain is Team Flare, in general. <laughs> I don't even remember his name, but um, essentially his, his whole... Uh, his whole thing was that he said, oh, war is bad, so I might as well fucking destroy the entire planet. <laughs> and then, which I'd be fine with if they treated it as as insane as that is. But all of the like main characters are like, he sort of has a point, but he's kind of crazy in the way he goes about it. And it's like, no, he doesn't have a point. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I, I, I believe they the call that though. insanity. Yeah, they're no, so they're... common too. Like you have all these JRPG villains that are just <laughs> like, well, I want to save the world by killing everyone. It makes no sense at all. Who are you gonna save at all? What what's the point? You're you're saving them from a lifetime of despair. You're sa- <laughs> no, you're saving them from having a chance at getting something better. Like Seymour from Final Fantasy. It well, makes that, no that's sense kind of the of logic it. that the newest Fallout 4 DLC brought in with the mechanist robots, albeit unknowingly. They basically kill everybody because that's their, that's their programming logic, is to save humanity. Mm. Which is by killing it, unfortunately. Uh, um, what do you think of uh, villains who are just following protocol? Uh, I get it. You've got a job to do, and bills are going to pay themselves. 
<laughs> well, the protocol makes sense in some way. It's fine, but, but many of like, the who made the protocol first of all? Uh, yeah, I, so, some asshole. I, I need an example before I can before I can go into that. Yeah, for for I would I'm just say sure. really kind of any mercenary anti-hero from anything. Uh, like uh, think of a robot that's charged to like protect the human race, but it does that by um. It does that by putting everyone in like forever stasis. That that's okay, the, so, that's the okay, main villain so mostly... of Will Smith. That's the main villain of Will Smith's iRobot. But um... <laughs> so glad I wasn't the only person thinking that. <laughs> oh god, uh, I want to go back to to Pokemon really quick because uh, the original rival Blue or Gary or whoever he has <laughs> that he has that Knuckles thing where he's always better than you, and then he was actually then... not. I know, but then he's like, "Oh, I've already, I've already found seventy Pokemon types. Smell you later," and he walks away. He and was the best Pokemon villain ever, just because of the fact that he's actually beating you to the punch every part of the game, always by going like, "Oh, friendship is overrated. I'm just gonna treat my Pokemon like slaves all the game through." Uh, no, I, I like him. Gary was a little bit. Dies. Gary was a little <laughs> bit nicer. I think you're thinking of Silver from uh, from Gold and Silver because Silver was a dick. Yeah, he was yeah, Silver was a, was an active criminal. <laughs> yeah. yes. Like he he literally like stole shit from people, including and his like, first Pokemon. Yeah, yep. he, there was like things where it was like, uh, I think there were break-ins, and it it was linked to him, and not just the like first Pokemon. It was like he just went in and stole people's like children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, he he was a fucked up eleven year old. But that's how it goes. First you steal a child or two, then you defeat the Elite Four. Like, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> that's one very steep slope. God. Yeah, um... First you're illegally you copying about... CDs, and then you're selling heroin. <laughs> I, I mean, his, his father was Giovanni, so I guess that's what happens. Yeah. Spoiler alert for, uh... That, that's so old, there shouldn't be any spoilers. Maybe but, that should be the next uh, the, the next villain basis for Pokemon games, is that, you know what, we've had a really bad time with children, let's just kill all children. When I was a kids. child, I had a, uh, when my, I was a child, my, my uh, babysitter, my babysitter spanked me, so uh, to save all children from this, I'm going to murder them all. Yeah, the next you know, it's team, like, like team like, abortion. Like, the adults can't do anything, and then they leave it up to the kids who get pets, and they make the pets fight. It's weird. So it's like legal dog fight. fighting. Oh man, that would be a fucked up Pokemon. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what about um Pokemon fluff version? Uh, what? I mean, like, I hated X and Y as as a Pokemon game. Just because, even though like the bar isn't particularly high for Pokemon games, they're not the best. I still felt like it was pretty not good or mediocre. I like, I like breeding because it's breeding is more accessible, and you know, Brixen's awesome because Fox. <laughs> yeah, Team Flare is entirely forgettable, but Chespin is awesome. He's the first grass starter I've ever picked. Chestnut is well, great. Usually, um. The grass starter is completely useless comparatively. It's really weird for me because I always pick the, the grass starters, but like when I actually go back and I always lean towards more of the fire type starter, but I always pick the grass one anyway. I don't know <laughs> why. Like blue, red, yellow has like you pick Bulbasaur to start and you can beat the entire game with him. It is so biased towards that character, it's ridiculous. Yes. Wait towards who? Bulbasaur. Like, he is completely overpowered through the entire game. You can play... Wait, really? Can, I, I thought Squirtle was overpowered, because um, he gets Mega Punch later on, and... He uh, can't learn Cut. <laughs> I mean, he gets made Mega Punch later on, and it's just a one-hit KO every time. Uh, uh, the, the thing about Venusaur, though, is Venusaur can plow through the first four gyms with relative ease. He's resistant to electric, and beats water, rock... And fourth is technically like, grass. Oh, fourth so. is grass. Yeah, but, but he's but he's resistant to whatever they throw at him. Yeah, and immune to all the powders and everything. Yeah, and then once you meet Sabrina, you finally have an issue because you're dealing with a psychic type, and then maybe Blaine. Once you get to Blaine, yep. so you only. But by have... then you should have an earthquake, and then you can just. Yeah. Fuck Fuck you're also so over leveled at that point. It's ridiculous if you just go yep. for one Pokemon. Yep. Yep. 
But, okay, all right. Let's let's get back to villains because we've been yeah. Okay. Well, uh, we've been topic. talking about Pokemon way too much. <laughs> no, let's keep talking about Pokemon. I heard that the Black Two and White Two are basically Nintendo's fu to Peta. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're fighting Peta this time. <laughs> Peta's oh the yeah, real yeah. Game here. They're totally Peta throughout the game. Uh, team team uh, was it, what was their name? They're, they're still team Plasma, Pita? but there's like Team Peta, like, like Neo Plasma or something. Oh. Uh. So um, we're gonna call them Team Neopets then? Wait, wait, wasn't wasn't Team Pla <laughs> wasn't Team Plasma the Diamond and Pearl one? No, they were Galactic. Oh, like yeah. I work on a Pokemon fan game. I I know way too much about the Pokemon. <laughs> universe. They they all blend together after a while. Yeah, no, they definitely do. <laughs> Although I will say, I I think that like in ter I mean in terms of most unrealistic messed up stuff, I'd say that I like Diamond and Pearl and stuff because it. It goes straight into, like, Eldritch Abominations in the later games, especially in Platinum. Sweet. Like, you essentially go to, um, the city of, uh, how, how do you say it? It's like Relay or something? Hmm? I mean, you're not supposed to be able to say it, but it, it, Cthulhu City oh. is, like, the final dungeon of the game. Yeah, I know how it's spelled, but not how it's pronounced. Right. Yeah, put it up on the on the video or something. Yeah, as an annotation or something. I will definitely do that. All right. Uh, so l let's dive a little bit deeper here. Uh, do you prefer sympathetic villains? Uh, I know we've been talking about villains who are just following protocol, villains who piss you off. Um, obviously, they aren't particularly sympathetic. Uh, does a villain with a backstory make you more or less engaged in a game, Adam? Honestly, I think it just kind of depends on what sort of story the game is trying to tell. Because I think there's a time and a place for the sympathetic villain that you don't maybe don't want to fight, but you sort of have to fight, and it's kind of this big emotional thing. But I also think that there's a time and place for the kind of villain who's just, you know, mind-numbingly evil for its own sake, and you have to kick the crap out of him because you have to. <laughs> <laughs> because he's the bad guy. Yeah, it's It's... I think if I had a choice, I would probably prefer a more sympathetic villain. But honestly, if, if the story is good on its own, you know, I don't really care. All right. Uh, Red Mage? Nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you, the sympathetic villains are not my speed at all. If you're going to have a villain in there, he needs to be a villain, not, not somebody who could be a potential party member. Because if he doesn't end up being a party member and there's not a bigger bad out there that you all are trying to fight, it, it really kills it for me. Um, going off of, I mean, what we kind of talked about before, Kafka's a, you know, a very good example of this. And one I can't believe I forgot, Porky from Mother 3, um, is kind of in the same boat. He's just so far gone <laughs> that everything he does is basically just the purest form of chaotic evil. And he's throughout the entire game. And by the time you get to the end, especially if you played Earthbound, you just you you want to kill him. You need <laughs> you need to, to to feel satisfaction. He gets um, arguably so, one of the worst fates of a villain. Oh no, yeah, he totally does. And it's totally like the best feeling once it happens because you're like, ha. Ha ha ha! <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> Fucking shit. But um, but no. So I I'm not a big fan of sympathetic villains unless that it's something where they end up like joining your team either either temporarily or permanently. Like General Leo from six, uh, Beatrix from nine, that kind of thing. I am the bad guy, and it is your job to take me down. Ha 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 ha! percent of villains, yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Fox. What about you? Uh, I definitely say yes to the sympathetic villains thing. Um, it's pretty much one of the big reasons why I like, you know, the example I gave earlier for Silas from the Chaos Rings game. Um, you know, I, I really find characters that, not that I don't mind the mechanical villain. Let's say I, I should I could refer this to an extra credits video they did on villains. Uh, great series, by the way, if you don't watch it. Uh, but they talked about you know, mechanical and narrative villains, and I guess I'm more towards the narrative villain, just because I'm a guy that likes a lot of story in my games, and it's also the same kind of villain that I'm working on with my game, is one of those who, yeah, they're a douche, they're evil, but they have a reason and a goal that they're working towards for that, and I think there's just, you know, if you can add more character to that person instead of being some forgettable throwaway, oh, defeat the evil power, then, you know, that's that's more... 
power of tea in my book. Uh, so more of a Twilight Zone kind of philosophy test <laughs> sort of thing. I guess. Well, I mean, because uh, I would compare that sort of to an episode of the Twilight Zone where you have a situation and you can see, you know, every character's perspective, but only one person's going to, you know, end up happy in the end. Like, one of my favorite episodes is from season four where there's these Earth colonists and they get stranded on this faraway planet. And one guy becomes the leader. Like, he's ordering everyone around, and there's a bunch of strict controls on water and food because of, you know, how fucking hot this planet is. And mm -hmm. 20 years later, they get rescued. But the guy who's been leading everyone and ordering them around doesn't want them to go. He wants to stay in charge. He doesn't want to go back to Earth and be some random schlub. But the planet Thrawn is only getting hotter. So, it basically, everyone leaves, and he's just leading himself. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah. It does suck. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm a fan of, of of that philosophy kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't mind it, but it's it's good. Don't get me wrong, but I don't know. I think my it would boil down for me just villains who are douches but have a reason for being douches. Okay. If you can relate to them and kind of like in a way feel bad for yeah. them, then I yeah, that's that, good. I think that's the best sort of villain who you you sympathize with them and you can see where they're coming from, and. They start to make the sort of decisions that you would make in that situation until suddenly they don't. And they start <laughs> doing really terrible things. And you're like, okay, I could justify this and this and this. But then you just did that, and that's when I can't really, you know, sympathize with you anymore. And, you're, and you've, you've gone full evil. <laughs> Perfect. Man, Call of Duty once tried to make a sympathetic villain. They didn't wasn't do it, it well. Wasn't that that Russian guy? So no, that um, like three games... games. No, I'm I thinking think of, of uh, Shepard, or is it Colonel Shepard, or whatever? General Shepard, that's what, who it was. Isn't that Mass Effect? No. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, the thinking same of, time, I'm thinking of that one, the one guy from, um, his name is like, I, I think he was in Black Ops 2 or whatever, and like, his whole reason for like, making a, um, for being anti-American or whatever, was because like, the main character from the last game walked in and saw his walked in like broke into his house and saw his like burn patient sister and like got scared and killed her, which only makes what? you really which only makes you really hate the protagonist. <laughs> what? I'm not even joking. Yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it is. I remember who you're talking about now, and yeah, pretty much. Oh my god. Uh, so, so Carb, while while you're talking, uh, what the hell was even the question? Sympathetic, sympathetic villains. Versus... Sympathetic villains. Okay, um, it really depends which uh, mood I'm in, actually. Uh, if I'm in a mood for a good time, I, I'm all for the, like, campy, um, like, ah, I'm evil because I'm evil. Let like, me uh, twirl my mustache. <laughs> like, like Bowser from, like Bowser from the Mario RPGs, where he talks, like, openly about how evil he is. <laughs> it's it, it's pretty it's it's pretty funny for that and um if i'm in more of a like morose or serious time, like uh mood then a sympathetic villain is good but i sort of feel like you have to do you can't just give me a paragraph of text to read about how sad his backstory is to make me feel sympathetic for him or <laughs> whatever the villain is like um because there's a lot of games that try to um, make you feel bad by just being like, yes, once upon a time his family died, or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> kind of right. Undertale, right? Yeah, kinda yeah, yeah. yeah. No, awesome. Like, if we're talking about, um, I mean, which villain are you referring to? Because that game pulls it, like, twi uh, three times, actually. Yeah, that's my point. The entire game does it. For everything you fight has a sad backstory and a really good reason for fighting you. And it gets frustrating pretty fast. Yeah, yeah. Asgore is like the protocol villain. It's like, no offense, but I need another soul. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I somewhat, I somewhat, li somewhat like Asgore because he's not attacking you because his son... Or, or not entirely because his son died. But, like, the other ones are all just like... Oh, he killed my brother, or whatever. I killed lots of brothers. Stop it. Um, what was I going to say? I mean, like, just 
Because, and I feel like it's a really, in, in the neutral route of Undertale, like, how there's literally the part where everyone just fucking tells you why why Asgore is the way he is, why, like, his son died and shit. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, like, yeah, five, it's, minutes, it's, uh, five minutes before the fight to try to make you feel bad for him. Yeah. Especially, like, there's there's some hints of Asgore wanting more power because he kind of wants to fight the humans... Oh yeah, Asgore's uh, Asgore's a racist fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, the humans yeah. were racist first. Yeah, we. Yeah, that makes it okay. You know, two no, no, no. Really, really, what it is 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 that like a, a war broke out that's just not disclosed. So, so it's never really said who was racist first. <laughs> Everyone's a little bit racist sometimes. <laughs> Everybody poops. <laughs> All right, uh, Slaw, what about you? Well, honestly, I couldn't care less if they're sympathetic or not. What matters to me is if they are charismatic or not. Mm. I think a good villain makes you care about them, not, or rather look forward to actually meeting them, either because you want to kill them or because they're actually funny. Like Handsome Jack from the Borderlands. Yeah, he's funny. Yeah, but yeah, you get to see his face if... from the beginning, yeah. though, because there's the intercom thing in the yeah, Echo. Yeah, but that's, that's my point. Like, he's funny. You, you like him. You like him more than you like the good guys, right? <laughs> but you don't mind beating him because he's still an asshole. <laughs> but, <laughs> also, uh, uh, something, something like uh, GLaDOS from uh, Portal, or yeah. where, where it's just like you constantly are interacting with them or are being interacted at by them. Yeah, or, or like, uh, just to take another generic example, Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII, you mm -hmm. get this feeling of this super badass guy, you even get to play with him for a short while, and all he does is just outshine you in every area of the game, <laughs> so you do want to, you, like, you want to hang out with him, right? But you can't have him destroy the world, or become part of the live stream, or whatever stupid reason he has for doing what he's doing, so you need to beat him, but, but they are, they're still charismatic, right? You, you care about them in some way, it's not like... Well, like, you don't care about Flowey, right? Like, who cares about Flowey? No. He's no, just being a dick to you, and then he's completely irrelevant for 90% of the game, and then he's a dick to you again. Yeah, and that's the, only, yeah. the only people who care about him are the ones that write fanfic. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you, you do not listen to the people who write fanfic. <laughs> <laughs> I share like, Flowey. Dude, the things I've seen written about my game, like, you, you'd think I'd get away from it since it's such an obscure game in the first place, but the males I get, like the freaking weird pairings, the people who force in lesbian relationships between freaking male characters, like, it makes no sense. It's ridiculous. Like, Be happy no... you have an active, active fandom. Yeah, but it's like, no, Celia, the 16-year-old girl, does not have a relationship with the big stone monster, okay? It does not happen. <laughs> no, no, that she she for doesn't. five minutes, he's, Okay, he's the here. only active shit in my, in my game, or from the fans, is is uh, the main character in his car? So, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, you you at least you don't get the like MS Paint fan art sent to you. So that's... yes, I do. Okay, so it, <laughs> it's I I would not call it beautiful. You have not succeeded in life until you've had Rule Thirty Four made of anything that you have made. Uh, yeah. If they make it, can I please put it somewhere where I can't see it because it creeps me out? Like yes. I made the most innocent game I could think of, and then they send me weird fan like pictures of. Are doing unspeakable. Listen, the more it's innocent you make something, the more people are going to want to defile it. Yeah. True. And this, but, but today no, we like... learned that people are the true villains. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, we are the villains! Yeah, yeah, at the end it just... <laughs> it was the, me all the along. The game just ends with a message saying, the villain was the fans all along. Kill yeah. yourself, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the only real way to win the game. But wasn't Strange that... Game. The only winning move is not to play. <laughs> no, wasn't that the Dark message Dark. of like Metal Gear Solid 2, though? It was a big F you to the fans? Kind of. It is and it isn't. It's more of a, an experiment but... against them so much as it's like hate mail to them. Mm. Is it every Metal Gear Solid after the first one a big <laughs> F you to the fans? No. Oh. I mean, there, there, there's, a to there's one game that's a complete F you to the fans. It's a uh, Fez 2. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, speaking of, of Fez 2 never coming out, I want to know your guys' favorite villain moment. You know, we, we've all played a gajillion games, and I bet you have at least three different instances in your mind where a villain did something and you went, 
that motherfucker. Uh, so I really like, obviously, kind of the smug villains like Gary and Knuckles, but my favorite one out of, out of all of them, my most memorable one, is Galleon from Lunar the Silver Star Story. I, because Galleon is one of the original four heroes that took out the bad guy a long time ago. And uh, you, you hear a couple things like, I heard that Galleon had a crush on the, gal on the goddess Althena, but she went with Dragon Master Dine instead. And all this other stuff. And then you find out that Dine died or whatever. And so Galleon comes with you to do some investigating, some big important stuff that you don't know anything about. And then, surprise, Galleon's the villain! <laughs> gasp. <laughs> and a gasp. Yeah, it's so great because he joins your party temporarily and he has all these amazing magical attacks that you don't get till the end if you get them at all. And he wipes the floor with stuff and then you go talk to the dragon and he just kills the dragon like, Poof, bye. Uh, yeah, so just the way they framed it, you know, Galleon doesn't have much of a backstory, but he has exactly enough to make you, oh, you know, you have an idea in your head and then he just blows it out of the water. Hmm. <laughs> I love that kind of stuff. Okay, so this isn't even really like a big, I don't know, like a big fuck you moment or anything like that from the villain. But one thing that always that always stuck with me, even even now, is back in Final Fantasy VII. Now th this is talking like little little red mage here, okay? Because I'm <laughs> you know playing this for the first time on the PS1. You get out of Midgar. You're going, you find the chocobo place, you find the swamp, you go into the swamp, you don't realize what's going to happen, you get attacked by this huge snake who just wipes your party. And there's nothing oh, you I can do Oh, I hate that about. asshole. Oh, the but then, I'll fuck that but guy. Then, <laughs> but, you get, but then eventually, you, know, you figure, oh, okay, you get the chocobo, you run past the snake, you get there. And you're walking up to this cave, and there's one of the snakes just impaled on a tree, and you're just like, oh, that, he just killed that thing. Sephiroth killed that. <sighs> I've got to fight that guy that beat up that snake. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and you just kind of, like, stop and pause, and you're like, wow. <laughs> like, I know I played him in the, in, the, in the little flashback, and he was strong, but that might have been a joke, but this is, this is visceral. This is real. That thing just whipped my ass, and he just impaled it on a tree. You know, it's just, it's not really like a big, you know, villain moment, but it's just a very powerful moment to make you realize what it is that you're going to be fighting. Eventually. Oh, that I remember that the Midgar Zolom and like it's it's all impaled. It like the camera pans down on the image and they were like, oh fuck, separate. Yeah, ever, I, yeah, everybody's just like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's probably one of my favorite just villain moments in any game because you just because even now like because my my wife is actually playing through it for the first time and watching over her shoulder like they got to that part and even then I got like a little bit of chill and I'm like, mm, that's a good scene. I like that scene. <laughs> Oh god! I like the scene in is it Final Fantasy Ten? Yeah, where um, you basically just found out that Seymour is the biggest dick in the world, right? And mm -hmm. it's actually evil, which is super obvious since the first moment. But the <laughs> party isn't that quick at picking it up. Giant blue so, hair antlers. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> he, he summons his dead mother to channel her pain into exploding things. Yeah, that's a good guy, right? <laughs> but but yeah, so. You're pretty much rushing to, I think it's one of the Grand Masters in the game, to tell him that this guy is like the worst guy ever and you should stop him. And he just goes like, oh yeah, we know. And that's it. And it's such a good like, well, okay, so everyone you've been talking to so far, everyone sending you on these freaking missions are just completely corrupted bad guys. <laughs> and I like how it just turns the entire like game world over its head, just mm -hmm. in that spot. Yeah. yeah. Um... I am going to mention uh, another Mario or Mario and Luigi once again because I really like those games. Um, the third one is probably the best out of the series, but uh, once you you play as Bowser for the most part in the game, and uh, he's not actually the villain of that one. He's not the villain of any of them really, but uh, when you you kind of get like thrown out of the Mushroom Kingdom and Bowser's Kingdom, and once you get back, like the entire place has been like enslaved by like the the actual villain Fawful, who's also a really fun villain, and and it's just like he he's completely turned like everything into his own place, and it's kind of like fuck you, that's my job. <laughs> yes. Um, I actually gotta go. My apologies. 
that's totally fine. That's, that's no problem. Fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Can you give us a villain moment in like 12 seconds or less? <laughs> Guy grows up, has a tragic accident, someone dies. He kills everybody else because he lost something. The end. <laughs> Perfect. Yay! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Oh, all right. Such a common all right. Well, I, I you, got one. Thank you for joining us, Fox. All right. Well, yeah, take care. Bye. Bye. See, See ya. All right. I got one, and I think I'm the last one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I've got another one, real quick. But then, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, I know I've talked about Jade Empire before, and I've been trying to rack my brain about what's what's a really really good villain moment, and I keep coming back to Jade Empire, where. The moment you find out the villain of the game is the villain of the game because he's been manipulating you for like the last 15 hours of game. <laughs> and when you finally get to the point where he's like, oh, by the way, I've been the villain all along and he murders you. <laughs> you know, that's the moment that made me go, son of a bitch must pay. As soon as I get out of purgatory, I'm going to kick the shit out of that guy. <laughs> uh, so a, a little bit of context for those who missed six podcasts ago or whatever. That guy trains you in martial arts, but everyone you fight says there's some something weird about your style. It, it yeah. doesn't quite work. It, it's it's an... like there's something. It's like there's a weakness in your technique that nobody can find. Well, there actually is a weakness in your technique, and only the guy that trained you can find it. And the guy that trained you is the oh. villain of the game. So, as soon as you you know kill the the guy that he really wants you to kill, and you rescue him, he basically says, okay. It's so good that you remembered all of the basics that I taught you. Even the bad stuff. And he just, like, five-point palm exploding heart <laughs> techniques you. Wow. So this is kind of like a minor version of the, uh, is it, Kung Pao thing, where they train a guy wrong for, for jokes. Yeah. It's a giggles. But played straight. Ah. Uh, yeah. If you've got an ass, I'll kick it. Yeah, so, so imagine uh, you are Wimp Low in Jade Empire. Yeah, except more, much more competent. Yeah. We trained okay, you wrong so... on purpose as a joke. <laughs> okay, so the the other the other one that came to mind here is is the Final Fantasy Tactics one. It's not even a main villain. He's kind of a he's the minor villain um from the first act. Algus or <gasps> Argus or whoever what his name translated becomes. Yeah. Cuz he joins your party early on and he's kind of a dick. Um but he's, you know, he's got good intentions kind of. But then you kind of find out he's, you know, standard normal born. He hates anybody that's uh, that's a commoner or, or you know, just treats him like dirt. And your best friend is a commoner, and so is his sister. And <laughs> at one point, at the very the climactic battle at the end of chapter one, he takes out his crossbow and he's aiming it at uh, your friend. And then his sister gets in the way and he just kills. Or no, no, he he shoots her, and then she's alive, and she takes it anyway. But he just basically shoots her, like right at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, may may I? May I please? May I please? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so his name in Japanese is Argeth, but we call him Algus because that's better. Um. So yeah, as Red Mage was saying, uh, Rams are the main character. His best friend is Delita, who's a commoner, and then you guys meet Algus doing some other important mission stuff or whatever. Algus is of noble birth. His family's name has uh, deteriorated as of late, and he's kind of pissy about that because he thinks rank is everything. And, obviously, now you have a person who values rank and a person with no rank in the same party. Things happen, delete a punch is him, whatever. You get to the final encounter in Chapter 1, which is Fort Zeacton. Basically, uh, Delita is not involved in the shooting, actually. Uh, he's down on the ground with Ramza, but a member of the Death Corps who is the, the bad guys right now, they're a group of, of rebels or whatever, they're holding Teta hostage. They captured her earlier in the chapter, and the guy's like, hey, you, you, can't, you can't do anything to me, man. Not only did I rig this place to blow, but, uh, but I've got this girl, you can't do it. And literally, your, the main character's brother tells August, do it. August says, yes, sir, no hesitation, shoots Delita's sister right in front of him. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't hold her hostage if she's dead, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, no. This and and he's and he is such a minor villain, but that, that moment you're just like, oh motherfucker, you are dead. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
Oh, yeah. I'm going to murder your face. The, the best part of that fight is you don't even have control of Delita for the fight. Delita just rushes Algus. Like, yeah. there's knights and wizards in his way, and, like, either you let Delita die, or you're just coming up with him like we're doing this. Yep. Let's go. Yeah, that is a fantastic moment. Let's do our, our last little question here. If you okay. could, if you could steal a villain from any form of media to put in your game, who would it be? And uh, I've had a lot of trouble answering this question, but I'm gonna say off the top of my head, probably someone Joker esque like Kefka, because I enjoy the chaos. I enjoy how much a villain like Kefka or the Joker would bring to the table. They would never be boring when they're on screen, and that is something that I highly value. Is if you're going to if you're going to be on screen, you're going to do something that's worth my time. And Kefka and the Joker always do whether you're doing it, you know, out of manic comedy or manic uh just like poisoning a river, which isn't comedy at all. I didn't know how else to put it, <laughs> but you get my point. So, the sort of villain that I've always really, really liked is a villain that sort of messes with the main character's sort of mental state. And when I think of a villain like that, the Joker's kind of like that, but the villain that's really like that to me is the Scarecrow. Mm. Because that's literally his his whole shtick, is that, you know, he's the one who holds up the dark mirror and makes you look into it and you find out more about yourself and kind of messes with your deepest, darkest fears and insecurities. And I think if you can pull a villain off like that, well, you can have an amazing villain. Yeah. That was, I can dig it. That was mostly uh, like Arkham Asylum, right? Well, he, he's in Arkham Asylum, and he is prominently featured in Arkham Knight. In Arkham Knight, he's the main villain, but you actually don't get to see a whole lot of him. Like, you don't really get to do anything fun with Scarecrow until the very end. He, he is definitely a lot more fun in Arkham Asylum, you know, when he's messing with your game and, you know... Yeah. Making it's a you shame think it that it's glitching. It's a shame it doesn't get more screen time in general. You could build, yeah. like, ten games just out of his stuff, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's what I love about the Arkham games, you know, when, whenever it comes to Scarecrow. It's like, they took Eternal Darkness and the really awesome sanity mechanics with that and just put it into a Batman game, because why not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, while you guys are still thinking I I've got something else to say about like a Joker type villain uh, mm. I ended up getting a manga a couple years ago called Flower in a Storm and it's 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 alright you know it was only two volumes which was really lucky but halfway through the first one the, the main girl and her new boyfriend they go to one of the boyfriend's friend's houses because they get invited to a wedding the guy's getting married and they're like okay yeah I'll, I'll drag you along it'll be fun whatever but, uh, so they get to the mansion and they're talking with everybody. And then the, the main character's boyfriend asks, Oh, hey, so who's the lucky girl? And the friend says, Yours! And grabs her and pff, off on a motorcycle they go. <laughs> Mr. Steal Your Girl. Uh, it's Mr. Steal Your Girl. Yeah. Like, just that kind of transition is great. <laughs> just the, the absolute mood whiplash. Yeah. I got two guys. I first of all, I'd say Griffith from the Berserk manga anime. Okay. Mostly because, well, I enjoy the schemer type villain. They're fun. He's clearly intelligent. He clearly has like an end plan, and is well, he's clearly not a good guy, but he's not just doing it for shits and giggles. He's actually he has reasons for doing what he's doing. On top of that, he's this like impossible to defeat entity, which adds some death to it all. I don't like when you just throw like, oh, it's just a guy fighting you. Like, a lot of Batman villains tend to be in the end. Like, Batman punches them in the face and it's over. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have a guy to build up towards that gives you a reason for, like, ridiculous JRPG growth where you go from, ah, this threat might be too much to me to literally fighting planets with your sword. And the other guy would be what was his name? Yeah, yeah. Uh, LaCroix from um, Vampire Bloodlines. Like Vampire the Masquerade? Oh, oh, yeah, okay. Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, yeah. Uh, Sebastian he... LaCroix. 
I've actually wanted to play it recently, but for some reason I cannot get it working on my computer, even though... No, I it is ridiculously finicky to get it working in general. Yeah. Also, you need so many of unofficial patches to make it yeah. playable and interesting. But I found that the out. Thing, and it yeah, the thing with him is he's... Well, okay, everyone in Vampire is evil. That's just yeah. how the game works. Like, you're literally going around eating random people, because why not? <laughs> but this guy is... Well, he's not more evil than anyone else. He's just very, very ambitious, right? He doesn't mind stepping on some people to get what he wants. And that's what he does the entire game. He pretty much manipulates you and the, like the world around him to make things work. Because he's not very powerful in himself. He just has a lot of influence. So it's kind of like a kingpin character in that his power comes more from his contacts and from, well, him actually outsmarting the player, which I think is way more interesting than just, well, you can't fight this guy because his sword is twice as long as yours is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are my two. Um, I mean, if, if it's specifically for the game that we're making right now, um... Given that mine is is kind of like I said heavily based in in Monster Rancher, which by nature is a very light-hearted, happy series, you get a little bit into in four, you get a little bit like the ethics of you know what constitutes raising a monster, and then or just basically you know having slave labor kind of thing. Um, I would really like to have somebody who is who is actually like a malevolent human because in almost every game no human is evil there's always just some ancient monster from the past that's super strong you know if, if there's a villain at all uh, like in the first two the only goal is basically just to win all the tournaments there's no there there is no villain um so having something you know like a human i guess of some kind who is who is actually genuinely evil and doing things for his own right like a, a rival tr monster tamer that is actually like trying to raise an army to you know take over like something like that would be interesting but i can't think of any any archetypes or specific examples right off the top of my head for something like that i have discovered the secret to carrying more than six pokeballs at once oh, oh. right basically <laughs> some, something like that like that like stuff like that is always bothering me it's like why don't they just have like I, I have this bag of Pokeballs. They all have Rattata. They all know Quick Attack. I will eventually kill all of your Pokemon, and there's nothing you or, can do about it. Or, or, or if you just let Squeenix make a Pokemon game, and the guy can wear, like, eight belts. Yes, I'm oh. Pokemon. <laughs> well, uh, are, are, are you done? Yeah, that's that's all I got. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, this, sorry. Um... But uh, I, if I was going to steal a villain, um, this character isn't exactly a villain, but Richard from the Hotline Miami series, <laughs> I would, I'd want to steal him and make him into a villain, because while he's not exactly a, uh, a real physical character, someone who had the same powers as him, he has the ability to like essentially appear anywhere he wants and just like completely fuck up the area and like fuck with people's minds like make them see uh things that they aren't seeing or that aren't real is he like the great gazoo in the flintstones where he just kind of shows up warps reality for a bit and leaves well he sh what he does is he like kind of shows up and um shows shows people like disturbing shit to show them where they're going to like try to make them stop like uh, oh, okay. to try to convince them to do other stuff, but I think like someone who's like who has those same powers, uh, but is just doing it to like fuck with people, <laughs> and like is just a complete asshole and the villain would be pretty cool. It's kind of like the anti Bob Barbas from Devil May Cry. Yeah, like he, he shows you completely normal things to fuck with your mind. This guy is <laughs> out instead. <clears throat> The, here's uh, I'm going to make you hallucinate of sitting at the coffee machine waiting it waiting for it to brew for <laughs> That's what eight he does, hours. Though. It's like in a case of twenty demons ravaged downtown, right? So he just shows like a picture of this random vandal doing a thing. It's just like no, it's not okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah, no, more more just like someone who has the ability to like appear like anywhere, which could make them like really threatening. The way you describe it, I think it would be really cool 
especially if they could show people their future, you take a lot of people who are down on their luck, show them th that they're going to, to die from drug addiction or their stupid decisions or whatever, and say, I can show you a better future. Walk with me to the path of righteousness. And then you have like, all these Like, lead them astray. Yeah, like, you have this guy who takes all these people who, you know, they realistically don't have a future and gives them a future under his employ. And so then you yeah, have that this of fanatical devotees. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, Richard isn't really all for fixing people, though. <laughs> he just kind of shows up and tells people they're gonna die, but, like, doesn't <laughs> even allow them to do anything. Like, yeah, he doesn't really give them an out of it. He's just kind of like, you kind of fucked up. This is what you're going to look like 24 hours from now. <laughs> You've met a terrible fate, haven't you? <laughs> it's like you're just going home and it's like, oh, you took the last Tim Tam. Here's a, here, look at this. Your fucking head's exploded. <laughs> <laughs> Richard's a fucking asshole. We love assholes. We're all assholes here. Yeah, now I'm a jerk and everyone loves me. <laughs> and there is no greater asshole than Dennis Leary. I, I think we need to... I think we should probably give people advice before we go. Oh, we should. We totally should, Carp. Did, did you have any advice for the people? I don't know. Do you have any advice for them, Cody? You know... Cricket, cricket. <laughs> uh, man, I can't do it like you do it, Carp. Yeah. I yeah. guess. Okay, um. Okay, well. Okay, okay, I'll try. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. Oh, fuck. There went my headphones. Hold on. Fuck. Back Hold on. Shot. Okay, guys. Guys, real talk. Buy some headphones with a long cord. Because <laughs> if you get a short cord, it's gonna get caught on your knee. It's gonna get caught on your dresser. They're gonna get caught fucking everywhere. And it's gonna break your nice, expensive equipment. Because it has a tiny ass cord that follows you wherever you go like a little fucking puppy dog. Sounds about right. Yeah, so so you need more than three feet, guys. Okay? This right here, this won't do it. You need at least, like, five feet. Be a professional. Don't be an idiot. Cody's an idiot. Don't be Cody. So, so yeah, you're asking if, um, don't be Cody, right? <laughs> yes. I was just going to say for advice, you all need to watch Defeat the Darkness now on YouTube. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, go watch that. Um, but back your shit up, baby. Look, yeah. if you want to roll with the high, if, if you want to roll in the high life with the high rollers like me, then you gotta back your shit up. Uh, okay, okay, hold on. Before we go, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was gonna see if there was any comment questions we could try to answer. All right. So uh, never mind. There aren't there aren't any uh, questions for now, but. Yeah, maybe one day. Okay, well, day. well, Someday. we'll we'll throw that at the end of this podcast. Then uh, we love comments on the videos. Uh, if there's a subject you'd like us to tackle or a question you okay, have, sure. Oh, and to uh, completely to completely rip off uh, another podcast. If you have a question, start the the comment off with question, so it's easy to find. Don't Out they of always all the millions of questions and comments you get right? Yeah, millions. Yeah. Because if you don't start it with question and you just end it with a question mark, I'm too stupid to read it, apparently. So I need that extra little prefix there. So, yeah, um, I, I guess that is really the end of the RPG MGP. Uh, you guys can look forward to the future when we, uh, when I, gu when I secretly guide Cody to rip off the Pizza Party podcast more and more. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, and... And and thank you all for listening. This is Cody signing off. And this is Adam signing off. This is Carbonic. I, I lit a mug on fire. <laughs> this is the Red Mage. We'll see you next time. This is Sloth. This is my game. See less questions. Steam 80% off. Then tomorrow.